Hi, welcome to my review of uh, the Adore box set, reissue and vinyl. Uh, I went on eBay uh, a few days ago and uh, a few weeks ago and uh, I finally got the Adore vinyl and the CD box set. Um, the liner notes on the box set uh, were uh, pretty cool, a bit weird in parts. Um, Fun to read some of the of the some of the nerdy facts about uh, uh, their hired drummer uh, being driven crazy by the percussion players because they weren't playing <laughs> time. Um, the album uh, being a play on Adore, Adore, uh, which. Um, uh, people uh, apparently never got and I still don't get what Billy means there so if someone can hook me up in the comment section and tell me what he means by it being a joke and what this adore thing <laughs> means I would be happy because I I went to university and I would like to get the joke um, well if you're talking about the vinyl it's really cool, it's got this glossy cover, it's got um, 180 gram vinyl, you got the, the lyrics in it, um, it's a cool package, um, it was a bit pricey, the vinyl was almost as much as the, as the whole box set, which is a bit silly I think. Um, the original vinyl um, it's a bit cooler, um, but it costs twice as much. Uh, my friend has that one. Um, I uh, do appreciate the Mona mixes, um, and uh, I, I even more appreciate the the mix up there, the the digital transfer mix. That sounds great. It sounds like a FLAC file or something. It's um, it's really high end. I wish the whole album sounded like that track on disc 5 in the box set because uh, uh, that one sounds awesome. I don't know what they did there but um, they must have done something right because it sounds so clear and it sounds like it's all I get a, a whole orchestral vibe that I really dig. Um, well talk a little bit more about the boxes since it's so extensive it's um, it's probably the best um, the best reissue yet in terms of material uh, there's a lot more uh, actual good uh, songs here than on the melancholy box set or the Siamese dream one or the gish one for you guys who are nerds and have gotten all those because, uh, I mean, if you listen to the Airplane Flies High box set, for instance, it's, it's easy to get bored with all the takes. Uh, I mean, it's fun if you're a hardcore fan. It's like if you like the Position Medley or whatever. It's uh, Of course, it's, uh, it has its value in some way. But for most uh, <laughs> people without uh, problems, <laughs> they uh, tend to get a bit tedious after a while. So I appreciate him uh, hiring Matt Walker to do some remixes. I don't know if they're, some of them are redone pretty recently. And uh, they sound cool. I mean, it's it's fun with um, Pug, for instance, because the Pug riff uh, for the song Pug um, has always sounded to me like a song that uh, <laughs> I always thought the riff was written on a synthesizer. I don't know how James did that riff, but... Uh, make, turning it into a synth riff really makes sense because that's kind of how the vibe is in the guitar riff. It's kinda, it sounds more techno than guitar to me, so I um, really dug that. To talk about uh, the actual album, I mean, I, I bought this album when it came out and I instantly got it in the 90s and I, I rate it really high and uh, I mean Time proved him right, of course, the folk vibe, the electronica vibe, the approach of the songwriting is something that is used a lot now. Um, I wouldn't say it was before its time because uh, all these elements have been used before Billy Corgan was in the game. I mean, uh, there's New Order, 
there's folk, uh, there's Joy Division. And um, the fun thing is though that he uh, really, really pushed the boundaries on this one. I mean, Blank Page is probably my favorite uh, all time Smashing Pumpkins song if there is one. And uh, it was really interesting to read about how that came about, that it was an instrumental and it was really, really a flow going on there, which uh, anyone who's a songwriter can recognize when the flow, words just flow out and you pretty much write a song in one take. And he seems to have had a lot of inspiration during this era. I mean, he wrote Perfect kind of the same way, he wrote Shame kind of the same way. Um, some of the tracks are just so ambitious here. I mean, Behold the Nightmare is absolutely amazing. For Marta is absolutely amazing. Once Upon a Time is really, really strong as well. I think it's kind of a... Song-wise, it's kind of a fair... Uh, fair challenge between Blank Page and Once Upon a Time for me, but... I mean, it, this record, it, it lasts because first you listen to... Sheila, Eva, Dor, Perfect, the singles, and you, and then you get more into it, and you start liking Annie Dog and Tear is, uh, it's just a great, great record for me. For me, this this record gets the top rating, uh, just as it is. So, uh, I'd say that if you haven't heard Adore, uh, you should definitely just check out the record um, and really get into that. Just wait with the nerdier stuff and and appreciate the record. Um, I mean, there, there's a there's a lot of stuff to talk about on this one. Obviously, since I mean, you got some. If you're a nerd like me, you've you've heard most of the stuff. I I I'd say I had heard all of the songs. Uh, so there's really no surprises with like uh, a new song or anything. Uh, I will though say that uh, Let Me Give the World to You, uh, this version is absolutely the definitive version of that song. I mean, Rick Rubin produced it, sounds great. Uh, I would say that uh, it was a good decision to choose Ava Dor over it, since if you go into Spotify, you see how popular that song is now, 20 years later. It's one of the most popular songs. So, um... I don't think it was the wrong decision to scrap the, scrap it. Maybe you should have put it on a soundtrack or something because it's a good song though. But what? Hey, what the hell? It's fun to hear now. Anyway, uh, some of the tracks are a bit unnecessary. I mean, the Cash Car Star, Matt Walk Reimagine is just got a strange tempo. Doesn't really do much for me. I like the the Machina Two versions better. So I'm looking forward to like the whole Machina package where you get the good mixes of all the Machina 2 stuff. I mean, I think if this is a cool issue, I think Machina is going to be amazing since there's so many good songs there that can be better mixed and uh, yeah, they, will be com they will be completed, uh, basically. Um, there are, though, a few songs here that are worth, worth mentioning in the, uh, the remaining discs. Serena is really cool. You get an outtake of that one. Uh, I, I, I remember I had that single, it was a B-side, I really liked that one a lot. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. The beginning is the end, it's the beginning, for some reason he put the slow version on here, which I don't understand why. Maybe he'll put the regular version on um, on the Machina one, I don't think so, but maybe it's copyright, I, I don't know. He, he basically has control over this stuff now, so... I would. I don't understand why he didn't put uh, the up tempo version on this one. Um, that's it for part one. This is such an extensive box that I'm gonna continue in part two. Later.